Hey, I'm Iso from Forage SF, and today I'm gonna show you a couple things with this really cool mushroom, the Namako mushroom, um, which actually means slimy mushroom in Japanese. It's a mushroom you don't see too much in Western cooking. It's really delicious, but you have to treat it in a certain way. If you saute it, it really does get slimy, and you just probably won't like it. Um, you can try. It might be delicious, um, but today I'm gonna show you a custard. Uh, so what we're gonna do is make a dashi and then do an egg custard with it and it will be pretty delicious hopefully. So first off, we are gonna make the dashi. So for that you need, I'm gonna use six cups of water and then you need kombu, just a dry seaweed. Not that much of that guy. Um, and what you want to do now is just bring it up to a boil. But don't quite boil it because once it comes to a boil, the kombu will actually get slimy um, and the dash will get slimy and just not very delicious, um, kind of gelatinous. Um, so you just want to watch it pretty closely. But while we're doing that, we can get our bonito flakes together. So these are just little fish flakes. So for this much water, we need about a cup and a half of Benito flakes. Oh, there you go. There's about a cup. More art than science. There you go. And now we'll wait for our water to boil. Ooh. Okay, so now the kombu is almost at a boil, so so it's just like a really, really gentle simmer. And that's what you want. Um, because like I was saying, if you let it boil, it's gonna get, it gets slimy, it's gross. Take that out, it gets a little bitter too. You just don't really want that. So take that out and then throw your bonito flakes into there. Like so, they're really cool. And then you wanna turn it back up again. And that's about it. Cool, so now we have the kombu out and we added the bonito flakes and we're gonna let that be on like a pretty high simmer for about a minute and then you turn the power off or the gas in this case. Uh, and then you're gonna strain it because you don't wanna eat them. Um, bonito flakes are actually super delicious if you ever had uh, okonomiyaki, uh, like squid balls. You see them dancing on top of there, that's really cool. Um, but for our use, they're really, this is really, they're done. Um, there's nothing else to really do with them here. So we'll let that simmer for a second and we'll be right back. Ooh. Okay, cool. So now we have had the dashi sitting for about five minutes off the heat with the Vino flakes in it. And so all that nice kind of fishy in a positive way flavor has infused in there. Um, so now we just strain it out and then you're done. Grab this guy. And what's cool about dashi too, is it'll store, you know, for, think of it like any stock, like about a week in the fridge or about three months in the freezer. Um, so if you're gonna make this recipe, make extra, cause it's really good. So the Namako mushroom soup, we're not gonna do this tonight, uh, but they're really good in miso soup. So if you make a dashi, make like a white miso with that and just kind of float the Namakos on top, um, kind of cook them a little bit on there. And it's super, super delicious. Um, so next we'll uh, make the custard. Ooh. So now we're gonna make our custard. Um, so for that you need four eggs. Uh, if you're gonna make the amount we're gonna make, it's four eggs, two cups of dashi, a bit of this uh, here sesame seed oil, and a bit of this here uh, soy sauce, and a few of these scallions hiding over here. So coily. Um, so first, crack the eggs. Try to look confident when you're cracking the eggs, you know? It's always a little stressful. <laughs> so if you're too confident, then they just get destroyed. That's not good either. I'm gonna whisk them in the strainer, which is a little non conventional. Go. That's not 100% necessary, but it really makes it a lot better. And then, so we're doing about a, a teaspoon, I was saying, of the sesame. Which, I'd say it's about that much. 
Um, and about a teaspoon of soy sauce. I always think it's funny in cooking videos when chefs say like a quarter teaspoon of salt and then they put in like a humongous handful. But um, you want more flavor. Put that together. Gonna pour in our dashi. Mine's actually pretty hot. Um, I'd let it cool down a little bit. Well, this is probably okay. We just don't want to cook the eggs. So it definitely doesn't want to be boiling. And there's our mixture. Um, so we're going to take these little guys. Little rocks glasses. If you have like some super pro, beautiful little white ramekins, you know, that'd be much better, I guess. But not in my house. My house we use rocks glasses. Maybe a little bit of room at the top. This is an overflow. There we go. And we got our water boiling over here. Um, it's our little homemade steamer. Um, what I'm gonna do is actually just put, what I like to do is just put a rag at the bottom of the steamer, because you don't want the stuff at the, just to be touching the metal. Um, otherwise, you know, if you have like a real steamer and a bamboo mat, you know, that's perfect. Um, but I'll just put a rag at the bottom, put them on top of there, cover it. But also what I'm going to do is put uh, tin foil on top of these. Um, that's so the the water that's dripping from the, the top of the pot doesn't fall into here because it'll make it bubbly and kind of gross. Uh, you can use plastic wrap too, which is a little bit gross. Um, so I prefer to use tin foil. So we'll get on to that next. Okay, so now we have our custard and our little custard shot glasses. Um, we're just gonna throw the, the mushrooms on top of this. So you just kind of throw a few of them in there. You know, it really depends on the size of your custard cup. Uh, what you want to do is just cut off these roots. So let's put a couple of these in here. I'll float them on top, little darlings. And these really don't need to be washed. You know, obviously you can if there's dirt on them, but dirt on them. But uh, I think it's actually okay like this. Let's get some nicer ones, huh? We got a whole bunch here. I'm gonna do it right. Yeah, so see that? They just kind of float on top. And we're gonna steam these for about 10 minutes, eight, 10 minutes. Um, so we'll get like a little bit cooked. It's really cool looking. I like this. There you go. And we also want to do, so the tin foil I was talking about before, it's kind of Okay, there we go. So then we're going to put them in the steamer. You can see I put a rag at the bottom because they don't want to sit on the bottom of the, the bottom of the pot. Um, I'm going to turn this back on, you know, get it really going, put the top on. And, uh, then these are going to cook for like eight to ten minutes. You know, after that time, pull them out, kind of see if see if come together. There we go. Now we wait. Ooh. Cool. So this has been going for uh, eight minutes. I'm gonna take this off. See, the reason for the tin foil is you don't want all that water dripping in the top. Turn this off. So you want to find this balance because you don't want it too hard set. So you kind of want that like silky, like Japanese tofu texture. Uh, I think I'm going to leave it in for a little bit longer. Ooh. So the time really depends. As you can see, it really depends on like how much water you have in there, how big is your pot, how hot is the, the heat that you have on it, how big are your cups that you have the custard in. So this is really what you gotta do sometimes. You just gotta kind of keep checking it. I mean, with that said, I'm not gonna pretend I made this a thousand times, so it's, uh, we're learning together. Yeah, there we go. So this is really what we're looking for. So see, it's like, 
it's not set too hard. It's still like a nice and jiggly a little bit, um, but basically, basically solid. And that's what we want. And I'm really excited to try this. Um, this is cool. So there's no bubbles in any of this. Is nice. Um, yeah. So we're gonna we're gonna take the tin foil, off, take these out, take the tin foil off, and let them set five ish minutes. Take off their little hats. Um, and in the meantime, we can cut our scallion garnish. Okay. And then uh, we'll be back in five minutes and we'll eat it. Okay, cool. So this has been sitting for about five minutes, a little bit longer, honestly. Um, so we're just gonna garnish it. So I actually have this. So this is something that doesn't look probably really amazing on camera right now, but you should really try. It's just um, like ginger scallion and oil. So just like one-to-one -one ginger and scallion and a good amount of oil, you heat up the oil and then cook the ginger and scallion maybe for 30 seconds in there. Let it cool, and then it's just amazing on everything. So you should really try it. Um, put a little bit of salt in there too. Maybe a little bit of lime. But I think this would actually be really good on here. Put a little bit of this fresh stuff on here too. And there you go. Yes, this is exactly what it's supposed to be like. So like not super set, like nice and nice and silky. Pretty good. Should try it. Enjoy.